Now I'd like to teach you about the for loop. The for loop is a structure in JavaScript which allows you to process lines of code repetitively. And it has a rather interesting construction. The for loop, not inconsequentially, begins with the word for. And then there is a parenthetical expression here which has three components to it. One is a variable declaration. And in this case, we're going to be using the variable i. And we're setting i initially to the value of 1. The second is a conditional statement. And in this case, we are testing to see if i is less than 11 or not. And the third is a construction which is an incremental mathematical expression. So this basically what you see in JavaScript, Java, uh, C++, etc. You see this type of incremental uh, expression. And this is uh, I++. Uh, I++ basically takes the variable I and it adds 1 to that and returns the value, of course, I plus 1. So if I happens to have the value of 3, after executing I++, plus plus, I then is equal to 4. Now, all three of these are really important in the for loop, and I'm going to explain how the for loop works in just a moment, but I just wanted to explain that first line. So here's how it works. JavaScript enters this first line of the for loop. It assigns 1 to the variable i, in this case. Okay. Then it checks to see whether i is less than 11. If that is the case, then it goes to the next line and executes it. So when it executes this first line, because i uh, having the value of 1 is less than 11, JavaScript writes out a single line of code, which is basically the value of the variable itself, in this case 1, and then the break tag. So we're going to get a 1, and then basically the computer will then go on to the next line uh, in the web page. Now, at the end of the brace, the computer will go back up to the first line of the for statement, and it will then increment i by 1 in this case. So i will then be equal to 2. Then, after it does that incrementation, then it will go and compare to see if i is less than 11 or not. If it is, it will execute the document right line again, and then we will get the result 2 and the break tag in the HTML page. And we continue to loop each time i incrementing by 1, i being tested to see whether it's less than 11, okay, and then continuing on and, and executing and re-executing the document dot write line. This JavaScript uh, does until i is incremented by 1 when it's 10 and becomes 11. When i becomes 11 in this loop, 11 is not less than 11 anymore. So only while this expression, i is less than 11, is true, are we going to be cycling through that loop. When i equals 11, or if perchance i is greater than 11, this becomes false. And when it's false, we then exit the for loop. And then we go on to the rest of the JavaScript code after this closing brace. So in a for loop, the statements within the opening and closing brace are executed continually until this condition is false. Okay. So again, after the end of this loop, we then go down to the next uh, line of the JavaScript, and we see, sure enough, that it's a document.write. And then the value of i after the loop is and then the value of i. We're going to see what the value of i is after the loop has executed. OK, I'm going to minimize this, and then we're going to show you what happens in the browser window when we run that code. Sure enough, we get numbers 1 through 10. 
So at all times, I is going to be less than 11. We execute that document right I, and then a um, break tag. And then finally, after that, when I equals 11, we do not execute what's in between those braces. And in fact, we fall after that to the last document right line. And it says the value of I after the loop is 11. So I does eventually hit 11. And when it does, it dumps out of the loop. That is the for loop. A lot of for loops in JavaScript do not begin with the number 1 here. So the value of the variable does not begin with 1. As you'll see in the next example, we're going to actually start i out at 0. Also, by programming uh, tradition or convention, we use the letters i, j, and k a lot to represent integers. So you'll see a lot of uh, the use of the i variable. Now, you don't have to use the variable i in your code, but um, most people, when they read code, uh, particularly in for loops, uh, like to see those types of letters or those types of variable names being used. Also, they're very short. And you don't have to uh, type out a whole lot of letters every time you want to access that variable. So this is very, very, very common in JavaScript.